I'll let you in on a secret. Your charts are boring. That's why people aren't reading your reports. <sighs> this is so boring! Well, probably. Maybe. In this video, I'll show you a couple of ways you can create dynamic circle charts that quickly convey progress in a powerful and interesting way. The downside is they do take up a lot of space, so I'll also point you to some alternatives that aren't space hogs. For this example, I'll be using some ratings data for a bike company, and the data is stored in a table, and we can see it's called Table 1. Now I'm going to insert a pivot table onto an existing worksheet. I'll just pop it there. And the pivot table facilitates the interactivity through slices. Now if you don't need your charts to be interactive, then you can skip this step. I want to summarize the ratings by product and I'm going to right click and add the category as a slicer. Let's just bring it up here for now. The pivot table, instead of summing the ratings, let's average them. So we're going to summarize the values by average and let's go ahead and format the numbers as a percentage with no decimal places. Now I don't need the grand total, so I'll right click and remove that. And I'm only going to do charts for each category at a time. So if I filter by category, you can see each category only has four items. Now I also need a column for the balance to take me up to 100%. So let's go ahead and add that as a new calculated field. We'll call the field rating bal. And the formula is one minus the rating. Just double click to add it to the formula. Click add to insert the field and OK. And there it is in my pivot table. You can leave it at sum of, that's fine. We can actually tidy up the heading. Let's delete the sum of and notice I've still got a space at the front that's just going to differentiate the header name from the field name. It won't let you duplicate the name of the field. Let's also change this to rating percent. And we can just make these columns a little narrower. Okay, next I need some values for the segments and the segments in the chart can represent milestones, they can aid interpretation or simply draw attention. For this example, I want 30 equal size segments and this requires another series. We'll call it segments and to generate the series, I'm going to use the sequence function to return a list of 30 values. I'm going to skip the columns argument and start at zero minus a sequence of another 30 rows starting at minus one and this is just going to give me a list of ones so rather than the sequence function incrementing the values that are returned it just gives me 30 ones. Now if you don't have the sequence function you can simply select 30 cells type a one in control and enter to enter one in each cell. Now another option instead of the same size segments is you can change the values in each segment to vary their sizes to reflect milestones with the total adding up to 100. So for example, the first segment might be 20%, the next 30%, and then 40 and 10. But just keep in mind that if you use this approach, you'll also need to add labels to each segment to help people understand what those segments represent. I'm going to just create 30 equal size segments, so we'll leave it at that. And to start, I'm going to just select the segments and insert under pie chart, we've got donut. Let's bring that over here closer. In fact, while I'm here, I'm just going to fix the slicer format so that it's four columns wide. That's just going to make it horizontal. We'll go into the slicer settings and turn off the header. And let's just resize it to give them more space. All right, now I can bring my chart up here. Now, I don't need the legend, so let's turn that off. Next, I want to format the segment color. So on the format tab, I can choose the shape fill, or I can control one to open the formatting pane, and that's what I prefer to use. So here for the segments, I want a solid fill, and I'm gonna go with this petrol color. And then for the border, I want a solid white border, and that's just going to allow each segment to appear separate. Next, I'm going to link the chart title to the cell in my pivot table for my first chart. So with it selected, press enter. Let's just make this chart 
a little narrower so that the chart area is in line with, roughly in line with the size of the chart. Okay, so we've got our segments. Next, I need to add the rating values. So with the chart selected, I'm going to right click, select data and add a series. The series name is in this cell and the series values are these two. We'll click OK and OK. And notice the two series aren't sitting on top of each other, which is what I actually want. So I'm going to select one of them and then on the chart design tab, we're going to change the chart type. And in here, we're going to put the helmet series on the secondary axis and that's going to place it on top of the segment series. So I'll click OK. Now I need to help that series underneath shine through. So I'm going to select the top series and to just select the 95% section of the segment, I'm going to select it again. And then under the fill, I want no fill. And then for the balance, select that separately. I want that to be a solid white fill, but we're going to make it transparent 25%. So my chart's coming along. Let's do some more formatting. In order to copy this, I want to get rid of the border on the chart shape. So no fill for the shape and no outline. That's just going to allow the charts to sort of overlap one another and get them closer together. Let's also format this in keeping with my theme. So on the home tab, I'm going to change the font color to match my chart. Let's give the font a different style and we'll make it a bit bigger. So now that I've got my first chart complete, I can copy it three times for my other products. So I'll close this pane, holding down control and shift, I'm going to left click and drag to copy it three times. And notice that they're quite close to one another and they're actually overlapping, but because there's no border and no background, they're not covering each other. All right, now all I need to do is change each chart so it's picking up the next product in the pivot table. And notice that the formatting gets lost, but we'll fix that with a clever trick in a moment. All right, so there's my three charts. Let's copy the formatting from this first one. So selecting the outer edge of the chart, Control C to copy, select the next chart, just the outer edge, paste, special, and then formats. Let's repeat that for the other ones. Paste, special, now a shortcut here is just double click formats that selects it and closes the dialog box at the same time. All right, now I need to link my chart titles to my other products. And when you copy the formatting, it loses the formula that was in the chart title originally. So we just have to add them back in. And as a finishing touch, let's insert a text box to display the percentage. So with the edge of the text box selected, let's equals and I can't select the cell in the pivot table because you can see it puts in the get pivot data formula and you can't link a formula to a text box. So I'm going to click just outside and change that to C4. And let's go ahead and center that. We'll make it much bigger. Let's change the font first in keeping with my theme. I'll make it the same color. And then let's change the format so it's got no fill and no outline. And then let's left click and drag to copy it across. Change that one to C5. It'll lose the formatting, but don't worry, we'll fix that in a moment with our clever trick. This one is C6. And the last one is C7. All right, let's get the format here. So with it selected, double click the format painter and then just click on each one and escape to release the format. Let's make the slicer a bit bigger in keeping with the width of the charts. And let's go ahead and give it a color in keeping with my chart colors. And now if I select a different category in the slicer, we get a different set of results. Now I'm just going to right click and go into pivot table options. I'm going to turn off auto fit so that when I select an item in the slicer, my worksheet doesn't jump around. And there you have a pretty cool effect, interactive circle progress charts. We can also create circle progress charts without segments using the same data layout. And of course we don't need the segment series at all.
You might like to make the donut size larger, so instead of 75%, 85. And you'll also notice that for this series that's the remaining balance, instead of formatting it in white, I formatted it with the same color, but given it a 50% transparency. As cool as circle progress charts are, they do take up a lot of space. And while you can make them smaller, sometimes you just can't make them small enough. In which case we have some other options. Here with a simple column chart, we can create a thermometer effect. The average rating has the fill color and the balance has no fill, giving it that thermometer look. And this is a stacked column chart. And with these, we can make them much smaller so they can fit into really tight spaces. Or if you have qualitative bands, a bullet chart might be a better option. Now there are links to tutorials for both of these charts in the video description. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the example Excel file from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.